Hello, everyone. I'm Donna Fiducia. And I'm Don Newen. And this is Cowboy Logic Radio. Cowboys didn't dance, didn't wear designer shirts. When their hearts were filled with memories, their bodies filled with birds. They would sit around the campfire and exchange a piercing glare. Yes, back when the West was really wild, Cowboys didn't dance. Welcome to Cowboy Logic Radio, everyone. I'm Donna Fiducia. And I'm Don Newen, ladies and gentlemen. We're not going to joke around tonight. Normally, we have a lot of fun in the first segment, but uh, neither Donna and I feel like having very much fun. Um, Clearly, the situation that happened in Las Vegas is, uh, is tough to even speak about. Our hearts and prayers and thoughts and... And emotions, quite frankly, go out to all of the families and all of the loved ones that uh, that lost a family member or a loved one in Las Vegas, along with the 500-plus people that are, we're hoping will recover. It's uh, It was an unspeakable thing to wake up to on Monday morning. I, I, I'm at a loss for words. Yeah, you know, we here on the East Coast, that's exactly what happened. I got up in the morning, put the TV on, and I see this tragedy. And I'm going, what the heck happened? Because everybody was focusing on Puerto Rico over the weekend. We missed this because of, you know, the fact that obviously it happened in Las Vegas with the time difference being on the Eastern time zone. Well, there's a but, lot that was going on other than Puerto Rico. Absolutely. Okay. Over the weekend, we had an ISIS attack in Edmonton. Alberta, Canada. We had an ISIS attack in France. Mm-hmm. And then we have Spain that's absolutely gone off the freaking chain with what's going on there. With Catalonia. And then you've got the disaster that's being completely mismanaged in Puerto Rico. We're going to touch on Puerto Rico for just a moment, ladies and gentlemen. We're, we're not going to devote very much of the time of this show to Puerto Rico and the complete mismanagement of what's going on by the mayor of San Juan. But, Donna, you've got something that you feel is interesting that you'd like to talk about with regard to Puerto Rico. And then we're going to get back into Las Vegas. We're going to talk about some of the uh, the other terrorist attacks that have taken place over this weekend. Well, just... My former colleague at Fox, who I've I've done a lot of anchoring with. I was actually the anchor, and Geraldo was out um, covering many, many stories in my years that I was at Fox. And he's obviously pretty critical of the right. He's sort of the point counterpoint at the Fox News Channel. But he was extremely critical of what was going on in Puerto Rico as far as getting the relief out there to the point where he gets the mayor of San Juan on and she's going, people are dying and this and that. He goes, what are you talking about? I've been here for like a week. There were 16 dead after the hurricane. There's still 16 dead. I had a friend who who took his boat from the Bahamas, his yacht actually, with his yacht club, from the Bahamas tried to sail relief informa- uh, re- relief goods into the port of San Juan. It takes him four days to get there sailing the Caribbean, he was turned around. And he had people that he was told to just get out of the port because you've got dock workers and union workers telling you to get the heck out. So he had to throw his supplies that he had to people who were begging for it over the side of his boat. And these people are on dinghies and all that stuff. But what you got to realize... Well, my question to your socialist friend is why did he go to Puerto Rico? Why would they not go to another island that didn't have 10,000 troops or didn't have all these supplies? Why didn't he pick an island that actually may have accepted that and needed it? Somebody didn't do any research. They picked the wrong island. Well, that's neither here nor there, but at least you Well, yeah, it is here. But the point being is also, though you've got a situation where the dock workers have complete control, Puerto Rico is a third world banana republic. I'm sorry. These people are corrupt. This woman is corrupt. and come right out and say it. It has a terrible So again, why did he not with. go to an island that would have accepted their, their help and their aid as opposed to turning them away? Somebody at his yacht club in the Bahamas didn't do their job. Well, I guess. But the point also is 
that if Geraldo's critical of it, you know something's wrong. And it's not even so much the um, infrastructure. I mean, it's not so much as the uh, electrical uh, things that they have going on there. It's just the infrastructure was bankrupt to begin with. The country was bankrupt to begin with. So now it's going to be totally rebuilt. But then, you know, of course, that was along the weekend as well as what was going on with the NFL. Who's taking a knee? Who's not? Who watched? We didn't. We're not even talking about it. Let's yeah, spend I mean, no time on the joke. NFL tonight. Okay, so then you get up on Monday morning and you see this jerk who suddenly has three names. I'm sorry, I won't give him three names. His name is Stephen Paddock, 64 years old. Does not fit the mold at all. You know, usually you see a gray-haired ex-hippie freak. They're complaining, but they're not going to act on any of this. We've got close to 60 dead, almost 500, over 530 injured, and many of those injured are are serious dozens of guns found in this jerk's hotel room bomb making materials in his car more ammo and guns found in his home in uh where's this mesquite nevada and all he had before was a traffic ticket so it just goes to show there's no and of course hillary clinton spends zero time in waiting oh we need to stop the second amendment oh the second amendment we got to well these that guns. was to be expected oh, the moment i gosh. read that monday morning break. first thing monday morning the 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 clear uh thought that ran through my mind was that the left wing is going to start screaming about the second amendment here's the bottom line there's there's a lot that we would at this point would be speculating on there's discussions that the guy was radicalized and, and had become an Islamic uh, convert uh, about a year ago. Out. We don't know that. What no. we know, and all you got to do is listen to one of the 200 videos that's been posted on YouTube about this. This was an automatic weapon. My understanding after discussing this with Denise Simon, who's done a great deal of research on it, uh, is that these were either automatic weapons that he purchased a uh, 240 saw m240 saw or they were uh modified ar platform 308s 223s that were modified from semi-automatic to automatic either way they're all illegal you can't. I can't go out as a concealed carry. I've got a weapons permit. I can't go buy automatic weapons. Not allowed to do that. So the point is okay? moot with this gun control garbage. Yeah. Absolutely. You know. Now there, I, there's no law that could have been in place no. that would have prevented this numbnut, this sick bastard, from doing what he did. Now what we do know is this was premeditated. Very much. He so. checked into a suite. There were, you know, there was discussion about more than one shooter. There was not more than one shooter based Sounded on what like we, it. yeah. But that's the, the problem. The thing is, this was a suite that he uh, rented. He checked on, in on there on the twenty eighth, I believe. Mm -hmm. The festival started on the twenty ninth. It was a three day festival, twenty nine thirty and October one. The shooting obviously took place on the third and final night of the festival mm -hmm. when Jason Aldean was performing. This guy had planned this. Now, what that tells me, and this is speculation on the part of Donna and I and Cowboy Logic Radio, but the thing is, a far-right nutcase, you know, these, these Klan members, these nationalists, these white supremacists, these gun-toting rednecks, they're not going to be taking weapons and wasting a bunch of people at a country music festival. It's, they're killing their no, it's own. It's quite the opposite. Okay. Here's, here's what we do know a lot of people were saying about him. Um, believe it or not, he's a big fan of Rachel Maddow, they were saying. Okay? So he's obviously a lefty. He hated country music. He now, hated Trump. And he hated Trump. Okay, but here's so the So where else can you find fish in a barrel, Trump yeah. supporting fish in a barrel, Mm -hmm. than right where they were. 22,000 of them. You know, you watch these videos, and you. I just want to get sick to my stomach. You know, when the first burst of 50 or 40 rounds or 30 rounds came out, I didn't slow the video down, the audio down, fast enough to slow enough to count this stuff. But after the first burst, mm -hmm. you see, <laughs> excuse me, you see these people standing around, 
not knowing what has just happened. Some of them were talking about fireworks. They stood around. They didn't know what they were fish in a barrel. It was absolutely sickening Mm -hmm. to watch. And I'm sure the media has no choice but to cover this. But just like the Orlando shooting, they'll cover it up as fast as they can because it doesn't fit their narrative. This is just my experience of 30 years in New York City, what I've seen the last 10 to 15 years as well. I hope I'm wrong, but I'm just making that What do you hope you're wrong about? That the mainstream media is going to try to play this down as much as possible as soon as possible. Well, you can rest assured, and I'm not trying to politicize this, ladies and gentlemen, but if this was a left-wing, anti-Trump, Hillary Clinton or Bernie Sanders supporter, the bottom line is the mainstream media is going to teach treat this just like they did when a Bernie supporter went in and started opening fire at a congressional baseball practice. Yeah, they're going to they're going to squelch it as soon as possible. That's right. That's what I was saying. Now, there's some speculation, and again, though, this is only speculation because they're just starting this investigation. ISIS did claim responsibility, and there are those who study ISIS who say the wording does fit. These are people who can read Arabic. What we do know is an ISIS video highlighting the Las Vegas Strip is out there as they are trying to radicalize homegrown terrorism. And according to his neighbor, the shooter disappeared for six months last year. And... Kind of just doesn't sound right. Yeah, but we need to wait. Exactly. Before we start talking about Islam and radicalization and jihad and ISIS, we need to wait. Doesn't because matter. It's terrorism. as of this Period. very moment, ladies and gentlemen, we don't know. Anyway, the concert shot up in Europe What as well. we know is that was an automatic weapon. Mm-hmm. He spent a lot of rounds. Yep. And initially, when I heard it, I thought it was an M60. But, I couldn't tell you. I you know, Denise no Simon has kind of corrected me on that. But. Okay, so we have this country music festival. It's called the Route 91 Harvest Festival outside the Mandalay Bay. I would call that Route 91, but... Route. Yeah. You're not from New Jersey. Correct. 22,000 some odd people in attendance. The performers... Now, Jason Aldean was on the stage. I really like him, too. Performer Performers, though, John Rich of Big and Rich was on Fox is the Five. Now, they had performed prior to Jason Aldean. So he was on Fox News is the Five talking about the shooting. They had just finished performing, and Rich was at his bar on the Las Vegas Strip when the shooting began. In, in the bar that I have, we have a big emphasis on veterans and, and active duty. I have a lot of, a lot of police officers that, that come and hang out there. And so uh, I actually had a, uh, uh, a, it was a Minneapolis uh, police officer off duty was in my bar hanging out. And he came up to me and he showed me his badge. And he says, I'm officer, I forget his last name, but I'm, I'm an officer and I am not armed for the first time ever. I can't believe it. Are you armed? I said, yes, sir, I am armed. I have my concealed weapons permit, and I said, yes, I am armed. He goes, can I have your firearm so I can hold point on this front door? And so I handed over my firearm to him. Everybody got behind him, and he, for about two hours, without flinching, this guy kept a point on that front door wow. just in case somebody came through. I just can't imagine that kind of terror, let alone being where this shooter's shooting. I mean, just this is why they call it terrorism. It's i got to tell you something, and this is kind of a sidebar saying, note here. Mm-hmm. Um, I think the year was 96, Mm -hmm. 95 or 96. And I had the honor to work with John Rich, um, a group that I was playing with. John at the time was playing bass for the band Lone Star and they were just getting started and they were, uh, actually opening up. For a band that I played with. He opened for you? Yeah, John Rich did. How flattering is and, that? And just to add a little bit of a smile to tonight's first segment, back in the 90s, I was playing bass guitar, and I had a massive bass rig. I thought more was more, okay? So I had this big, expensive bass rig, and we finished doing our sound check, and, and then Lone Star came up, and they did their sound check with their gear in front of ours because they were opening for us. 
John walks up on stage and he's got a bass guitar and he takes a chord out of that bass guitar and plugs it into what we call a direct box. And a direct box means that he's not using any kind of an amplifier whatsoever. It's just the bass guitar plugged in, goes through the PA. And I'm sitting there watching John go up there and plug his bass in and I've got my big rig behind me. And I felt like the biggest chump (laughs) because here's John with a stellar sound coming out of his bass and no amp. So the next morning I get up and I take all my stuff down to the local radio uh, music store, (laughs) got rid of every bit of it and went to do and set my rig up just like John Rich because he proved to me that moment that less is always more. You should tell that to a bunch of rock and roll bands because you know yeah, what they there's say a bunch about, of them out there right now that yeah, don't get that uh, rock and rollers and the size of their guitars more, among <laughs> other things. Yeah, more is more. <laughs> but John Rich taught me that lesson one night in 1996. They are one of my favorite bands. John has since left Lone Star. He's gone on to do Big and Rich, uh, but the bumper music that you guys hear mm-hmm. is Lone Star. And uh, that night that I worked with John Rich and the rest of the guys in Lone Star, uh, Richie McDonald and all of the guys, um, they played that song, Cowboys Didn't Dance, When Cowboys Didn't Dance. That is a great it's a song. wonderful really song. Is. It's so I well encourage sung. you all to go out and buy it, yeah. When Cowboys Didn't Dance by the band Lone Star. Yep. But uh, at any rate, Donna, you were about to mention something about uh, what John what else? was talking about. Yeah. yeah. Also on the five on Fox, John Rich mentioned how country singers pretty much bond with their fans, and I'm sure you know it, it irks the left. It really does. And he says he reveres our military and our country. Every show we bring up veterans and active duty on stage, and at one point we had all 22,000 people at that show with their iPhones up in the air and the bright light on face, facing the stage, singing in unison, God bless America. Wow. In unison. And I look at that and I go, there's no race in that, there's no politics in that, there's no religion in that. That's just America with one voice, all singing a song about our country, celebrating the fact that we have the freedom to have these big outdoor music festivals and live our lives. That was literally going on about two hours before this shooting started i mean it's it's if you just watch it you can't help but get choked up sarah huckabee sanders during the white house press conference on monday even got choked up and just watching her i'm like i started to get choked up you just can't talk Well, it's difficult to talk about this i mean this is it's so senseless it's just so sense there were guys leaving that a venue with no shirts on and the cops are saying where's your shirt he said i took my shirt off to cover the face of dead people so you wouldn't have to look at it well and I mean, to use as tourniquets and in some cases as i mean you gotta you gotta put this into perspective ladies and gentlemen i mean we've got over 500 people that were injured 59 at least at the at the moment when we are broadcasting this 59 people dead it's definitely going to go up because they said these injuries many are extremely serious well if he was hitting people with 7.62 rounds that's a devastating round like to be hit long, yeah, we've got they? those rounds they are nasty and if Just it was nasty you know i think the majority of those rounds were probably two two three rounds coming out of a you know, uh, an AR platform, or if this saw. Well, how big using... is the bullet? Speak English for us people who don't really like guns. Well, it's it's slightly. I mean, it's the the casing and the bullet are about the size of, of a little finger. Not quite that round. Not quite that big in diameter. A two two three is just shy of a quarter of an inch. A quarter inch would be a point two five, okay. and this is a point two two three, and so. It's it, but but the thing is they're high velocity, and the two two three and the five five six round that's what our military is using in in their weapons in the majority of the ones that are carried in the, in combat. Now you've got bigger weapons obviously that uh, that are used, and you've got sniper rifles that have bigger you know bigger rounds. But it doesn't matter when you get hit by a bullet, even if it's a a twenty two round, you know you're gonna stand a pretty good chance of dying or at least being injured badly and the thing is the leftist media can't help themselves they just can't donald trump gave a very heartfelt speech 
on Monday morning right after this happened. U.S. flag is going to fly at half staff. And the Washington Post's Eric Wemple actually lectured CNN because CNN had said it was a heartfelt speech and, you know, it was very um, emotional. He actually lectured CNN and said, quote, never, ever say Trump gave a nice speech. I mean, these people just can't help themselves. Well, like who Michael was it? Savage there was a, says, there liberalism was, is a mental disorder. There was some legal woman with CBS that's been fired now. Oh, yeah. Because she comes out with just a an appalling comment. You know, the left... What was that comment? I don't remember, you know but it, it made me sick to read it. Now, you, you can try to find it. We've got a minute and 27 Actually, seconds. Actually, Matt Bruce texted it to me. And but it, you it, it's absolutely appalling at the behavior of some of the left in situations like this. You don't see this kind of behavior coming out of conservatives or right wing. You can see some crappy behavior by fringe right idiots, people that conservatives do not align themselves with. But this vile behavior, the vile things that are coming out of their mouths like, you know, they deserve this because they voted for Trump. That's appalling. Now, I'm paraphrasing, but did you no, find the quote? It's not even, it's even worse. She's, first of all, a legal executive. So she's probably a lawyer. Hello? How stupid can you be? With From CBS, CBS, ladies and gentlemen. Okay. She said in, in, on her Facebook account, quote, she has no sympathy for country music fans who are Republican gun toters. She posted this on her Facebook account. We have no sympathy. I have no sympathy for country music fans who are Republican gun toters. And so, she was fired, good. thankfully. And and it's amazing As CNN she actually be. acted that fast. Listen, we've got uh, we've got a couple of guests coming up tonight that I think you're going to really like. First, we've got Jim Dawes, host of America First Radio. We're going to sit down and talk to Jim about his show, ladies and gentlemen. He is starting this week, late Monday. Early Tuesday, 1 a.m. to 2 a.m., five nights a week, right before Matt Bruce, Jim Dawes with America First Radio. And then, in hour two, we're going to sit down with our good buddy, Trevor Loudon. And we're going to have a discussion with Trevor about Antifa. But as we go to break, ladies and gentlemen, we would like to let you enjoy Big and Rich with the crowd at Mandalay Bay, 22,000 strong, singing God bless America. Sing God bless America. Man in that hallow. Stand beside him. Man in God. Through the night with the light from above. From the mountain. To the place. Denise Simon. 18 hours a day, I live in a world as an intelligence analyst. Intelligence analyst. Intelligence analyst. Intelligence analyst. Intelligence analyst. What I find is reprehensible. What I find is terrifying. What I find is treasonous. What I find is treasonous. What I find is treasonous. The mainstream media has completely failed the American people. Failed the American people. Failed the American people. Failed the American people. Join me for the Denise Simon Experience every Thursday night at 9 p.m. Eastern.
Hey, Donna. Yeah, Don. Hey, when Jim Dawes, host of America First Radio, is not broadcasting his own stellar radio show, I'm being told that he listens to the archives of Cowboy Logic Radio. Come on, Don. You are so full of it. He does not. He does so. I really think he models himself after me. Don Newen, co-host of Cowboy Logic Radio. <laughs> So totally full of it. He does not. He is exceptional on his own. He doesn't need to model himself after you, Don Newen. Well, I completely disagree with you, Donna. I see huge similarities in Jim's style, his delivery, his level of professionalism that is a mirror image of not only me, but other great media icons like Michael Savage, uh, Rush Limbaugh, Sean Hannity, Laura Ingram, Michelle Malkin, Just stop. Glenn Beck. Don Newen, you are so delusional. You, all those folks, I've known them, and you are not even close. Ladies and gentlemen, catch America First Radio with Jim Dawes every night at 1 a.m. Eastern, 10 p.m. Pacific, right here on Talk America Radio, found at talkamericaradio.us. Donna, that is so bogus that you would actually say that I am not up there with those caliber of people that I just listed. Because you're not. This is Michelle Malkin from CRTV.com, and you're listening to Talk America Radio. This is Don Newen, co-host of the Drive Time Sit Rep. Join me as I call in to my intel analyst, Denise Simon, for my daily situation report, or Sit Rep, the Drive Time Sit Rep. Check TalkAmericaRadio.us for more information and showtimes. Hi, this is Dr. Kelly Ward from the great state of Arizona, and you're listening to Talk America Radio, the new dominant force in conservative talk radio. Donald Trump came to Washington vowing to drain the swamp and make government work for the American people. But the swamp creatures in D.C. aren't going down without a fight. And the deep state is determined to overturn the election and keep their gravy train rolling. In these turbulent times, it's critical for patriots to stay engaged and be prepared to defend this president. You can stay up to date on Trump's battle to make America great again by listening to America First Radio with Jim Dawes each weeknight at 10 p.m. Eastern on the Liberty Feed. Hi, this is Denise Simon of the Denise Simon Experience. You are listening to Talk America Radio, the new dominant force in conservative talk radio. Hey, everybody, they're back on again. Cowboys didn't dance, didn't wear designer shirts. When their hearts were filled with memories, bodies filled with birds. They would sit around the campfire and exchange a piercing way. Welcome back to Cowboy. Good evening, Logic. ladies and gentlemen. My name is Don Newen. I'd like to be the first to welcome you to the second big segment here on Cowboy Logic Radio tonight. Ladies and gentlemen, I think you will all agree with me that tonight's show riveting. is absolutely riveting. riveting. And it's about to go <laughs> way over the top because we have got, in our opinion, in Donna's opinion and my opinion, one of our favorite talk radio shows on the entire Talk America Radio Network. This, ladies and gentlemen, is a show that we consider to be appointment radio. Mm -hmm. But there's something that I have to explain about the host of this show, one Jim Dawes, that many of you may not know. Because when he does his show, he's exceptionally professional. He stays above the, the, uh, the bar, to say. And so he's not going to get off on tangents like sometimes I you do. do. <laughs> but I'm going to tell you a little known secret about Jim Dawes that you all need to know going into this segment. And then I'm going to turn it over to the beautiful Donna Fiducia to do this intro. And that is that I was told in confidence not to tell anybody that Jim Dawes mm -hmm. said 
that Don Newen is his favorite conservative <laughs> talk radio host on planet Earth. Not Rush Limbaugh, not Sean Hannity, not Liz Wheeler, <laughs> not not Laura Ingram, not Michael Savage, and not Donna Fiducia, but myself, Don Newen. And I was so humbled when I learned this when it came right from the lips of one Jim Dawes. Back to you, Donna. After he tells Jim to say it. That's pretty much it. I did I not, no Jim, I did not ask you to say that, did I? <laughs> no, but you no, will. <laughs> All right, Jim Dawes, host of America First Radio here on Talk America Radio, found at talkamericaradio.us. First of all, I just want to say that you, to me, Jim Dawes, are Appointment Radio because you do a daily show. It's an hour long, and it kind of recaps everything that's gone on that day. So it's great for people who try to work and try to earn a living, don't have time to sit there and watch, you know, news channels all day long and find out what's really going on from a patriotic America First perspective, hence America First Radio. And it's funny because when we were naming our network, that was the network name I wanted was America First Radio, but and we I said, couldn't do it. Can't do it, Donna. Because it was your radio show name. Anyhow, Jim Dawes, welcome to Cowboy Logic Radio. Let me tell everybody, though, real quick, that your show airs on our network and you find it at talkamericaradio.us. And if you... Uh, uh, if it you go premiered to, last night, Yes, Donna. that's what I was getting It to. premiered last night, ladies and gentlemen, on the terrestrial overnight package. And that means that Monday through Friday, well, actually, it's Tuesday through Saturday. Starting at 0100 to, hours. Yeah, Donna's trying to impress everybody with her <laughs> military time uh, knowledge there. 1 a.m. Now, that means late Monday, early, early Tuesday. Tuesday. And then for the next five days, you've got Jim Dawes coming to you at 1 a.m. for, I'm telling you, ladies and gentlemen, a stellar radio mm-hmm. show. And then Matt Bruce takes it through the rest of the overnight. You just can't ask for any better programming than that. But, Jim, I should also tell everybody that you have 30 plus years as a battalion chief, fire chief in Atlanta as well, serving in the Buckhead, Kirkwood, and, and Southwest Atlanta areas. Jim Dawes of America First Radio, welcome to Cowboy Logic Radio. Well, it is great to be on with uh, the notorious Don, Don and Donna. <laughs> Thank you very much, uh, Jim. Love, Thank I love, you. I love you all show as well, and uh, it's always good for a lot of yucks. You get your good substance uh, and, uh, and comment on the, the news from Donna. And uh, and all of the wisecracks from uh, from Don are always uh, always right on point. But uh, thanks for having me on. We try, we try. Anyhow, um, it's I sh- it's funny because I started reading your bio, and you worked in Pat Buchanan's presidential campaigns of ninety two, ninety six, and two thousand. I've had the pleasure of uh, interviewing Pat Buchanan a number of times, and I worked at the Fox News Channel. But essentially, Pat Buchanan had a Make America Great Again platform, didn't he? Um, Pat Buchanan was the original America First presidential candidate, and uh, and they did to him the same thing that they attempted to do to uh, Donald Trump. You know, they uh, they slandered him, they characterized him as a Nazi, they did everything to you know character assassinate the man. And uh, the only difference was. That Pat didn't have uh, you know ten billion dollars in the bank so that he could fight back, and uh, and they were successful in taking down uh, Pat's candidacy. So we lost uh, you know what six fourteen years no six yeah fourteen years that we could have been pushing back against this globalist uh, agenda and the new world order. Uh, but you know thank God we have one final chance here uh, with this real estate developer from New York. I truly feel this is our last gasp before we could possibly go into the dark ages, I hate to say. And we're going to be talking about just that uh, at the top of the hour with Trevor Loudon because of um, his new uh, movie talking about Antifa and how America is under siege from uh, Soviet Islam, Civil War 2017, and now Antifa, his three little uh, movies that he's done recently to focus on this stuff, and how it's so deeply entrenched, because I, what's scary to me, Jim Dawes, is that 
uh, the left has successfully, uh, well, I guess through the public education system and the brainwashing of these useful idiots, as the uh, the Russians used to call them, that uh, they've made America the bad guy. And yet they have no idea what they are protesting against. And essentially what Ronald Reagan said is... If they had the government they seek, they'd never be able to do the protesting they're doing. Well, that's right. The the left has taken over the the really cultural, uh, influential institutions in our country. You know, entertainment, music, movies, and the uh, of course the educational system. And so, you know, we've raised uh, going on three generations of kids that are totally unmoored from, you know, any knowledge of our uh, founding uh, principles or or even how our government works, uh, they're just uh, pressured, you know, by peer pressure and, and uh, to be cool and to, uh, to you know, to hate America. Uh, in the case of, uh, you know, white kids, to hate themselves, their history, and their uh, their own culture, and to, to buy into this, uh, this leftist narrative. The, it's just amazing to me that Antifa, is get, given a free pass in the uh, the mainstream media when you know they're actually marching around on the streets, waving um, Soviet era communist flags. Now you know Nazis are bad. There's no doubt uh, doubt about that. But uh, the Nazis are responsible for about 25 million deaths in the last century. The communists were responsible for over 100 million deaths in uh, in the Soviet Union and China. So. They're equally as repugnant, but, you know, they're given a free pass and nowhere near uh, the attention, uh, the alarm that needs to be set off about what's going on in the streets. You know, Jim Dawes, uh, the NFL has been in the news quite a bit. And uh, those of us that are America-loving, military-respecting and loving uh, patriots are disgusted at the behavior that's taking place we in no way want to squelch anybody's first amendment right but we can disagree highly with what's going on and how someone can do that the platform they choose uh and in my opinion the nfl uh is the workplace now when you were a battalion chief for the fire department in Metro Atlanta, that type of behavior would not have been acceptable at the workplace. Am I correct? You would, you would have been fired. Yeah, there, there is no workplace uh, where you could uh, purposely insult the majority of your employer's customers and expect to keep your job. This whole notion that this is freedom of speech on behalf of the NFL players is absurd. They're not allowed to celebrate in the end zone. They weren't allowed to put stickers on their helmets commemorating the murder yep. by the Black Lives Matter movement of those five cops in Dallas, uh, Texas. They weren't even allowed to wear a, you know, a commemorative uh, sports shoe to commemorate the 9-11. So the NFL is being very, um, very selective about the First Amendment speech that they allow their players to have. And in this case, it's patently anti-American. Well, I think one of the reasons that they've been getting away with this is a gentleman by the name of Richard Trumpka, who is deeply entrenched and uh, obviously very instrumental with the NFL Players Union. All unions. Yeah, he's the uh, president of the international um, AFL-CIO. He is, uh, he is not a labor leader. He has ceased being a labor leader about 20 years ago, and he's adopted the, all of the um, characteristics of a social justice warrior. He's no longer concerned with uh, securing employment and uh, decent wages for his membership. He, uh, he's, in fact, you know, just a, a, another social justice warrior um, that you know, is constantly grinding an axe, against, uh, against America and the Republican Party. And he's really sold out his membership and is, uh, is trying to exchange it, uh, you know, for foreign workers, foreign nationals coming into our country, illegal aliens. So Trump has, uh, you know, just been a disaster for the labor movement as a whole. And, uh, and really, 
no longer re- it really represents uh, American working men and women. Well, I totally agree. I also would like to get your thoughts on whether you think the NFL will ever be able to recover from the damage that has been done by these players uh, to the NFL. Well, Don, you can never overestimate the short attention span of the American public. So I have no doubt that at some point, you know, they will get uh, uh, the majority of their audience back. But there's a lot of patriots uh, like me who will have turned off the TV on Sundays and really uh, discovered that their life is better for it. We can get all the football we need on Friday nights at the local high school and on Saturday watching, you know, one or two of your favorite college teams. We don't need to, uh, you know, sacrifice our Sundays when we could be spending uh, time at church and with family to these uh, these pampered, overpaid, spoiled, uh, grievance-driven malcontents in the NFL. <laughs> what do you really think, I love Jim it. Dawes? I was sitting there before you made that description, that beautiful description of many of the players in the NFL. Um, I was thinking the same words, and as you were saying them, I would knock one off my list that I was going to end up following up with, and then I completely ran out of words. You you absorbed them all. Jim, let's get a little bit uh, into something much more positive to talk about other than Antifa and the NFL, and let's talk about your radio show, the history of it, why you decided to come out of fighting fires and get into fighting fires uh, on the radio, and also a little bit about the structure of your show, because I'll tell you, it's an hour that goes by very quickly. It's an hour that uh, that I can actually sit back, and while some of the things that you talk about uh, are disturbing, obviously, because they're current events and there are certain situations that are both domestic and, and international that are that are very problematic, but I'm not stressed out by the time I'm done with your show. I, I sit back and I enjoy listening to it. Again, ladies and gentlemen, Jim Dawes is our guest. We're going to tell you more about how you can find his show before the end of this segment. But, you know, Jim, tell me a little bit about the history of your show and, and why you've decided to jump into this fray. Well, as Donna mentioned, I, I was heavily involved in Pat Buchanan's presidential campaigns uh, in 92 and 96 for the Republican Party. And then in 2000 on the Reform Party ticket that had been started by Ross Perot. It was about that time, uh, I think it was 1999, that I started America First Radio. And uh, and it was, uh, they called it back then webcasting. It was before the invention of the, the iPod, so it wasn't called podcasting yet. Uh, there was just a handful of uh, broadcasters that were on the Internet. We called it webcasting. There was Alex Jones, um, Jeff Rents, uh, Stan Monteith, uh, a fellow named Rick Wiles and myself, and I started broadcasting America First Radio uh, with a nationalist message because I, I just believed that our country uh, was being usurped by the, uh, you know, forces of globalism, and that nationalism was uh, uh, needed to have somebody carrying Pat's message, defending an America First agenda. So I did that for a few years and really enjoyed it. And then I was elected as the um, the president of the Association for the Atlanta Firefighters and then later um, elected as uh, the uh, president for the State Association. Um, they were AF, an AFL-CIO affiliate, and I uh, expressed my opposition to Richard Trump's agenda at every opportunity. But, um, but I had to, once I got elected to that position, I had to step away from America First Radio because I, I couldn't have such a polarizing... Uh, platform while I was representing the interest of firefighters. Uh, went on to uh, to host a show in Atlanta called Fireline Radio, which was uh, targeted at uh, at the fire service. And uh, you know, I, I always uh, always missed it uh, doing the America First Radio. So when I retired, that was the first thing I did was get on this uh, this market down here in uh, in Florida, and then uh, ultimately uh, affiliate with uh, the Talk America Radio Network. And glad to join. Um, you know that uh, that lineup of uh, strong patriotic voices that uh, that uh, you and uh, Ron Phillips and uh, and all the crew are carrying. But basically, what the show is uh, is formatted for is to give a, a recap of the daily news in a, a a very concise way, but to offer insights that you probably wouldn't hear uh, in the mainstream media, including on Fox, 
you know, uh, a news network uh, because, you know, they're limited to what they can say, and there's no better illustration of that than the, how they're handling this Seth Rich um, the controversy. You know, there's very little doubt in anybody's mind uh, that Seth Rich was responsible for the leaks from the DNC, but uh, the crisis control team over there, the public relations team at the DNC, has successfully put a fence around that whole issue, and you're not even allowed to discuss it anymore on the mainstream media. So this is really, uh, these and other issues like that are fueling the rise of an alternate media, and uh, and that's what America First Radio is designed to do, is to explore those issues uh, without the constraints that are put on by the, uh, um, you know, by the politically correct police. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Um, you still and, have... and let me just say, let me just say before we go on that, that if you doubt for a second that Seth Rich was responsible for the leaks from WikiLeaks, just ask yourself this: if it was really a mugger that killed Seth Rich that night, do you think that a hundred and thirty thousand dollars reward would not have been enough to flush that mur- mugger from? Uh, you know, from hiding by now, do you, do you think none of his family or friends would have come forward to claim that reward? Uh, no, and I also don't think if he was mugged, he'd have his Rolex, his cash, and his credit cards and his cell phone on him, too. But that's another story. Um, the whole thing with Seth Rich that you bring up, it's so obvious. I mean, the Clintons have such a body bags. I mean, there's 40 or plus body bags associated with the Clintons. I actually have a a whole list somewhere in my pile of garbage here somewhere with everybody's name on it, uh, including the other guy more recently in the last year or so that uh, worked out on a regular basis, was supposed to testify, and then all of a sudden had a barbell crush his throat. So death by barbell, you know? I mean, come on. It's unbelievable. And and um, Vince Foster having fibers all around him because he was wrapped up in a in a carpet when he was dragged well into- our dear friend kathleen willie's yep. husband was killed yep we've I had mean, kathleen uh, willie on you our know show the again. list goes on and on yeah. and seth rich was just another casualty of either the clintons or the democrat party Every, anybody that has an ounce of common sense will acknowledge that don't you agree jim well, I think if Julian Assange ever steps outside of the Ecuadorian embassy, he's uh, he's subject to be uh, killed himself because he's the one that uh, knows and has the evidence that Seth Rich was responsible for the leaks from the DNC. And, of course, the importance of that is that's the basis for this whole uh, Russian uh, election hacking mythology that the uh, DNC and the deep state have put together in their uh, their effort to cripple this president. Yep. And, and the thing is, now they're saying that... Um uh, Assange might want asylum, you know, or, or to be... He wants to be pardoned. Pardoned, rather. Well, and, and that Trump they, they is say being, it's a pardon, but it's not yeah. a pardon because they haven't pressed any charges for him. And the truth of the matter is, he's not subject to any, any, uh, any charges. The New York Times and the Washington Post publish classified material constantly. And WikiLeaks is just another media outlet, so he's going to have immunity from prosecution. But the, here's another truth about Seth Rich. The fact that Assange is offering to turn evidence over proves that it's Seth Rich, because say what you want about Assange, he has never uh, given up one of his sources, and the only reason that he can do that in this case is because his source is now dead. Yep. And doesn't have any privacy. And he's never said anything has been wrong, but that's another story. Why do you think Donald Trump doesn't act on this stuff? Why do you think he still has... Well, he finally did get an FBI director. I don't, I don't know about the guy's background, I'll be honest with you, after Comey. Uh, but why do you think he's so slow in, in keeping the status quo with the IRS, not acting to even outlaw the Muslim Brotherhood and, and, and things of that nature, to really do what he said he wants to do? Do you think there's too many people within his inner circle that uh, really don't want him to succeed? I think he's focusing on the big issues. You know, uh, he he's determined to push through this uh, economic agenda that will bring jobs and prosperity back to the country and re- reclaim our sovereignty with issues of trade. And I think he looks at these other issues as side issues that will unduly upset, uh, you know, Washington if he goes after the deep state. My question is, you know, why is Jeff Sessions dragging his feet? They're, they're, yeah. All he has to do is dust off the investigative file for Hillary Clinton. She, she obviously engaged in bribery when she was Secretary of State, uh, you know, favors from the State Department in exchange for, 
huge contributions to the Clinton Foundation, why not just uh, go ahead and present that to a grand jury and let the indictments roll? And the fact that Robert Mueller had a big part in Uranium One. Why is Mueller even there anymore? Uh, Rod Rosenstein had a big part in, in what was going on in Baltimore with the unrest there. Bad choices by Jeff Sessions, in my opinion. And it's it's just such a... I know that maybe he's trying not to upset the apple cart, but this could bring down the whole house of cards and drain the swamp as he ran on and is still trying to run on today. I don't think any of this would stand up to any impeachment proceedings, but uh, the very fact that Robert Mueller was chosen as special counsel lets you know that the fix is in. There is there's no way uh, that somebody who, who is a conflicted as Robert Mueller is in this investigation would ever accept that appointment if he didn't have an agenda. It's mm-hmm. blatantly um, against the Department of Justice rules, and it's unethical for any lawyer. It's the kind of stuff that, as uh, Greg Jarrett over at Fox says, will get you disbarred. Ladies and gentlemen, if you like what you've been hearing for the past 23 and a half minutes, I sincerely urge you to tune in to America First Radio with Jim Dawes, our guest, 1 a.m. That's late Monday night, early Tuesday morning, and then you can listen for the rest of the week. And that's on the Justice Stream. In addition, if you're not a night owl, you can listen to them, and I think it's at 2 p.m., Jim, on the Liberty, five days a week, Monday through Friday. It's an excellent show. Jim, how can the listeners find you and follow your great work? Well, the best way is, uh, as you just said, to listen to us on the Talk America Radio Network. And, um, and if you miss a broadcast or you want to go back and listen to some of the archives, the archives are chock full of information that every uh, you know, uh, America-loving uh, patriot uh, should be aware of. Uh, if you miss a show, you can go back and catch it on the website at AmericaFirstRadio.com. America and I would Radio. also like to state that you've got excellent show notes along with each one of those archives. So, ladies and gentlemen, AmericaFirstRadio.com. Those of you that are listening on WDDQ Talk 92.1, WJHC 107.5, and WLBB 1330 and 106.3 FM, you now are going to get your daily dose of Jim Dawes, and I am thrilled. Big time thrilled. As am I. All right, Jim, it's been great having you on the show. We are huge fans. Again, folks, it's the best place to find what's happened during the day, your daily recap of the day's events. That's America First Radio with Jim Dawes. Jim, thanks so much for joining us here on Cowboy Logic Radio. We will be listening. Thanks, Donna. Thanks, Don. Great great to be with you. You bet it. And coming up next, we'll be talking to author and movie maker Trevor Loudon. And you're going to find some stuff that he's got to say. Very, very scary, folks. But definitely the information you need. It's coming up next on Cowboy Logic Radio. Cowboys didn't dance, didn't wear designer shirts. Cowboylogic.us Hello everyone, I'm Donna Fiducia. And I'm Don Newen. And this is Cowboy Logic Radio. Cowboys didn't dance, didn't wear designer shirts. When their hearts were filled with memories, their bodies filled with birds. They would sit around the campfire and exchange. A piercing glare, yes. Back when the west was really wild, that didn't dance.
Welcome back to Cowboy Logic Radio. I'm Donna Fiducia, along with Don Newen. And I'm Don Newen, ladies and gentlemen. Let's not anyone ever forget that. Back to you, Donna. Well, it's been a while since we've had Trevor. I just ignore him. <laughs> It's just the only thing. Well, so does Trevor. When he when That's he and true. Victoria come over here to spend time at Double D Ranch and hang out at the farm and play with horses and They ignore you. They they <laughs> Yeah. Basically. <laughs> and that's okay. Ignore who? Don. Ignore who? We ignore Don, don't we? He's going ignore who oh, okay. as in Oh, hey. Blonde moment I'm there, Italian, Trevor. Yes, blonde moment. Sorry about that. Okay, so <laughs> At Trevor Loudon, folks, if you don't recognize his voice, you will very shortly because it's just such a great accent. He's from Christchurch, New Zealand. Now, see, I, I guess I do more that of a... That was terrible. That was a Beatles Liverpool accent because I used to try to practice well, that. Well, hold on, Donna. Stop talking. Stop talking. Christchurch, New talking. Zealand. Stop talking. Yes. Trevor, how terribly <laughs> bad did she abort the uh, New Zealand accent there? Look, that was actually quite good. I was it actually was? quite impressed. Really? So, you know, I'll give it full credit for that. Yeah, it wasn't bad. I'll give it a, a good six out of ten. Because it Don. sounded to me like it was Margaret Thatcher on Helium. Well, that too. But <laughs> I always used to want to talk like the Beatles. That was that was my thing. So I used to practice that when I was a kid. All right, try it again. Anyhow. Let's do the intro for... I'd like you to do the intro for Trevor. I don't know if I can do this With again. your best New Zealand accent possible. Or he's from Christchurch, New Zealand, ladies and gentlemen. Trevor yeah. Loudon, he's a filmmaker... <laughs> He's an author. Actually, it's a. F- I can't do it any longer. It's the book that I like the best. <laughs> this is my fave, Trevor, and it's it is the Bible for anybody who wants to see what the left is doing. This is your initial book, which is thicker than the Bible, actually, <laughs> and it's cross referenced and referenced a gazillion times. Called the Enemies Within, exposing the communist, socialists, and progressives in the U.S. Congress, and that was your first major film. It was awesome. And then since that, Trevor Loudon, author and filmmaker, you have made three other smaller vignettes, I guess we could say, shorter films just to wake the sleeping masses that are so full of information. They're the America Under Siege films. You've got uh, Civil War 2017, Soviet Islam, and Antifa is your latest, Soviet Under Siege, American Under Siege, Antifa. These films are being shown even on One America News Network, folks, so uh, keep an eye out for it. Hopefully they'll play it again. That's channel 347 on DirecTV, and it is overtaking the Fox News channel, in my opinion, especially at 9 o'clock, I hate to say it, because Liz Wheeler rocks, and then I have to watch the Hannity repeat later on, but that's another story. Anyhow, Trevor Loudon, welcome back to Cowboy Logic Radio. Laurel, thanks for having me on, guys. It's always a pleasure. It's been too long. It has been. Um, seriously, though, you've been here at the farm, and we've talked, we've had some great talks about what you see. And most people, the first question out of their mouth is, well, you're from New Zealand, so what do you care what's going on? Please explain to them how it's a blueprint of what could happen here. Well, look, you know, all over the world, freedom is on the retreat right now. You know, the, the Russians are threatening Europe. China is threatening the Middle East as is North Korea. Um, Africa is pretty much under Chinese control. So, and and the Chinese are also threatening Australia and New Zealand. So if America weakens, if America goes down economically and militarily, we, we, we just, we all lose our freedom. Every Western country will go under. So anybody who cares about liberty, anybody cares about a, a free, prosperous future for their children, has to care about how America does. America is the leader of the free world, and it's, and it's struggling right now. Trevor Loudon, before we get into this two-part interview, and, it, and ladies and gentlemen, we're going to spend the complete hour with Trevor. So sit back, get a pencil and a piece of paper, or a pen and a piece of paper, and uh, let's start taking some notes. Trevor, a couple of times throughout the next hour, I want to have you lay out a your website, B, how people can reach out and study the materials that you've created, the the films and the documentaries that you've created. What's the best way for the listeners to be able to find any and all Trevor Loudon? Look, you go to my daily blog, which is trevorloudon.com, trevorloudon.com, and the Loudon is spelled L-O-U-D-O-N. If you want to check out my my 
major movie, Enemies Within, go to enemieswithinmovie.com. Enemieswithinmovie.com. That, that shows the extensive Muslim Brotherhood and Marxist penetration of the U.S. Congress and the Senate. And uh, we also have three more movies out that you can just see free online. Just go to, in, uh, just go to America Under Siege um, on Google, on, on YouTube, and you'll find all three of them there. You know, prior to uh, starting this interview with you during the break, we were talking about how Google and Facebook and Twitter are doing everything they possibly can to silence people like you. Do you mind uh, just kind of prefacing this discussion on your latest film with what you're up against with the social media and the mainstream media absolutely trying to extinguish anything that you've got to say report and expose well look on our second movie soviet uh a second small movie um america uh, america under siege soviet islam we had a heck of a job getting google advertising to to allow us to buy ads and and we eventually did we had to negotiate and we got some favorable person and they gave us a go ahead so we um we 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 got that underway with some struggle this one, they flat out refused to allow any Google advertising. They said that this is America under siege, Antifa. They said it violated their shocking content policy. Well, there's some shocking stuff on there, that's for sure. But this has taken off mainstream news broadcasts. It's taken off um, other other web, other YouTubes that are already available on the internet that are not being censored. They're not being shut down. So it was pretty clear to me that they didn't like the message. They didn't like Antifa being exposed because left-wingers love Antifa because Antifa does what most left-wingers would love to do but dare not publicly do. So, um, yeah, we, we've had a big job. We've had a real struggle. And, and, you know, we know lots of other conservative bloggers and Facebookers, et cetera, who have continual problems with their sites being shut down demonetized, um, Twitter algorithms being distorted to, you know, to lower their, their, um, their, their, their uh, reach, etc. So, yeah, it's, it's a very big problem. Well, the only thing that, that I found shocking about your latest film, America Under Siege Antifa, is that the mainstream media is failing to run that 24-7. That's what I found shocking about it. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> Trevor, here's the well, thing. Look, uh, oh, yeah. Well, look, who's the comedian uh, that, that did the Antifa movie? Um, yeah, Stephen Crowder's just put another little movie out on Antifa, which, uh, and he went undercover, and he met some Antifa activists, and they were talking about guns and, and weaponry, and he got all this on tape, and he took it to several mainstream media, undercover video, people talking about weapons, criminal activity, and not one of them showed any interest whatsoever. Not one of them wanted to have anything to do with it. Wow. Now, is, um, is it being shown, though, on his show, Crowder's show? Yes, yes. Yes, it is. But uh, it's, uh, even that, I think, is being suppressed because it's getting a whole bunch of shares, but very few hits. Wow. So, you know, I, I just think, um, yeah, 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 you know, I, I just think there's a... a, a a, pro, a policy amongst these major social media people to suppress conservative speech. Of course and, there um, is. We, 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 we have seen it our own selves on many occasions, and people dismiss this as you know paranoid or conspiracy theory or whatever, but we have seen it time and time again, and friends of ours have had their Facebook pages just, you know, with 300,000 followers, just deleted, just gone, you know, over one post that, Facebook deems objectionable, but you go to left wing block, left wing Facebook sites, and they have, you know, they had, you know, people advertising for contracts to kill Donald Trump. But that was okay. <laughs> that, was, that was fine. It's well, amazing, in, in, isn't in it? Watching your movie America Under Siege, your latest movie America Under Siege and Tifa, you have that one blurb from Ronald Reagan. I mean, this is going back decades, then, where he actually says. These, I guess he's referring more to Nazis at the time or, and fascists, but these people who 
uh, advocate that kind of government will never even be able to protest the way they're protesting under that kind of government. It's sheer idiocy. And I blame the education system. Unfortunately, decade after decade, we've got uh, just a bunch of lunatics now teaching our kids. Well, you have. And, and Lindsay Grathwell makes the point in the Antifa movie. She's, uh, she, is, she is a free speech activist from Berkeley who's come up against Antifa on several occasions. But she makes the point. She, she is the daughter of Larry Grathwell, who infiltrated the, the, the terrorist weather underground group in the 70s for the FBI. And he worked with Bill Ayers, the famous professor from Chicago, the one who mentored Barack Obama, you know, started his political career. She, she, she says, well, you know, why is Antifa like it is now? Because Bill Ayers and his friends have had 40 years in the university system and, and, and spreading their propaganda through the whole education system to dumb down a whole bunch of American kids who are susceptible to, to cultish organizations like Antifa. How about- you know, they don't even know what they're... They sit around, Trevor, and they, and they chant these little mindless slogans, okay? And they have no idea why they're out there they have no idea what they're doing, and we're going to get in a little bit later with uh, with this whole kneeling situation that's being done by the NFL, and uh, at least I'm going to present to you and get your thoughts on the fact that I think this is highly driven by the unions, by the far left. Uh, quite honestly, uh, Antifa's probably got their fingers in that, or at least the money that's coming behind uh, Antifa is involved in this. I think uh, Trumpka is big time behind that with the Players Union and the unions. Denise Simon and I have talked about that in depth on the Drive Time Sit Rep. I'd like to get your thoughts on that. But the main thing is you've got these anorexic, black-wearing, and I mean clothing, ladies and gentlemen, not skin tone, black-wearing, black-clad. They look like they need a good meal. The the analogy that I would use is they look like a lot of the bands that are on the Warp Tour that are starving to be out (laughs) there living on scraps of food so they can try to create a uh, a career for themselves in rock and roll. They're uh, They're too cowardly to expose their face and they have no idea what they're talking about. They're just there to create chaos, havoc, and destroy property. Well, I, uh, I had an incident in South Dakota where we had some demonstrators at one of my meetings. It was a Republican Party meeting. A lot of um, elderly people there, not all, but a lot many. And a young girl, about 14 years old, came up to the stand, and she didn't realize who I was, and I said to my wife, I said, look, I think we're going to get protesters tonight. And this young girl said, oh, well, I'm one of them. I'm, I'm, I was asked to come here to protest. And I said, well, what are you protesting about? She said, well, I don't know. My friend phoned me, and she said there were fascists here tonight. And I said, well, look around. And she looked around all these, you know, nice 65-year-old South Dakota ladies and gentlemen, you know, and farmers and and. The, the, the salt of the earth. And I said, well, well, how many Nazis do you see here? And she just, she, she had no idea what she was there for. A friend told her, an older girl, who was basically the Spengali of the group, in my opinion, you know, got these young high school kids there to protest the fascists. And, and this is what they, these, these poor young kids have no idea what they're doing. Here's but what they are just fed these lies. It's a cult. It really is a cult. And, the, and they know? have George and, and Soros millions, though, to, to do this. That's what's really scary. Well, well the, the big point about Antifa is the kids on the street are just mindless thugs. They really don't know what they're doing. But they are all supported by Soros money, by, labor, by, by communist-controlled labor unions, by communist, various communist groups like Democratic Socialists of America, and the Revolutionary Communist Party and the Workers' World Party, but also by the Democratic Party. You know, we found strong ties in several places between Antifa and the local Democrats. And you've got to realise all of the major Antifa violence has occurred in cities like uh, Boston, Charlottesville, Virginia, Portland, Oregon, 
Oakland, San Francisco, and Berkeley, California. What do those cities have in common? Every one of them is controlled by a left-wing Democratic council, and every single one of them, there have been incidents where the police who are under the control of that council have been told to stand down and do nothing while Antifa beat up people, smashed buildings, and committed arson. Very common pattern. Seems like the stand down thing is rampant from the left, starting with Benghazi, but that's another story. Um, well, Trevor, yeah, Loudon, <laughs> Trevor Loudon, um, I really encourage everyone to get your book, and it's on my coffee table all the time, because whenever we talk about a, a certain uh, person in the Democrat Party, we can look it up and find all the communist ties within your book, The Enemies Within, exposing the communists, socialists, and progressives in the U.S. Congress. Again, we're talking with Trevor Loudon, an author and filmmaker. Find him at Trevor Loudon, L-O-U-D-O-N, dot com. And you can find all his movies there and also Enemies Within Movie, the big one, the initial movie you did, enemieswithinmovie.com. I urge you all to go see that movie if you can and, and find it. Now, The other thing we're talking about is how you mentioned Bill Ayers, mentor of Barack Obama. We have George Soros millions. It all boils down to what nobody talks about. We except I think people on our network and Don and I certainly have been talking about it. And that is the Cloward and Piven strategy. Create chaos actually to bring things down and bankrupt the system, which I think Barack Obama did his damnness to do by doubling the debt. And then to create it back up with the people in charge that you want. And this, again, is totally scary because of the control of the education system for decades. Yeah, you've got thousands and hundreds of thousands of young kids out there who have no understanding of American history or, or what makes America exceptional. They're told continuously that America is, a, America is an evil nation that suppresses the third world and is only rich because it's ripped off everybody else around the world. And, and the, these kids have this guilt complex about being rich, rich young Americans. And the only way they can expunge that guilt is to fight for the underdog, you know, to fight for the, for the oppressed of the world. And who is best at fighting for the oppressed? That's Antifa and the, and the communists and the Marxists. So thousands of young kids have been drawn into this movement like they haven't been since the 1930s. And um, they're just great. They, they just don't have the critical faculties to, to sort things out. And we, we saw this in the Bernie Sanders phenomenon. Now, Bernie Sanders correctly pointed out the corruption in Washington and correctly pointed out many of the things wrong with American society. But all the solutions were more government, more everything would have made things way, way worse. But because he told it like it was, he attracted thousands of young people who understood there was stuff wrong but didn't have the critical faculties to work out the flaws in Bernie Sanders' logic. And this is what's feeding into Antifa. This is what's feeding into the Black Lives Matter movement. All these radical movements we're seeing springing up on our streets, uh, they make an easy meet of these young kids because they've been brainwashed so long and really can't figure out truth from lies anymore. Ladies and gentlemen, we're speaking with our dear friend Trevor Loudon, filmmaker, researcher, activist, brilliant individual. Trevor, I tell you, man, the stuff that you write about, the films that you do and that you make and that you report on are terrifying. And one of the reasons that I find this Antifa movement to be so terrifying is that you've got a combination of two things that I'm seeing take place with most of these individuals that align themselves at least publicly with Antifa. Number one, they're angry to the point of being out of control. Secondly, they have no idea what they're angry about. And those two things, when you put them together, uncontrollable anger with no idea for the basis for them being angry, that creates something, in my opinion, that's very dangerous. Look, look, absolutely, because, you know, anger can be a positive force directed in the right way. But these kids are angry to the point where they will kill people. They will cause massive property property damage. They would 
try and do a revolution if they thought they could get away with it. They would, they would, you know, these some of these groups are arming up now. Many of them are carrying guns. Many of them have all sorts of weapons. There's even rumours now that there is bomb making going on. So these are angry. They hate. They are full of hate. They want to bring this country down. And in a lot of instances, the police are doing nothing to stop them. You know, it, it, this is a recipe for disaster here. It's only a matter of time unless this is cracked down on, which could easily be done. These people could easily be stopped. But if they are not stopped soon, people will die on American streets. I guess that's why they align themselves with uh, terrorism, in fact. I call them trust fund terrorists because living off mommy and daddy's money these kids have no idea what's going on trevor we have just a couple minutes left in this uh segment but can you talk about the fact that uh, they're nazis and the fascists they're actually the same thing well look we, we saw that you know back in the see, steve dace makes a great point in the movie um these these are not you know the not the anti-fascist the so-called fighting fascists right but even if they were fighting fascists, which is not true, it's just one bunch of thugs fighting another bunch of thugs. It's two street gangs fighting each other. And if we go back to the 1930s with the original Antifa, which was set up by the German Communist Party to, to fight against Hitler's brown shirts and, and anybody who opposed the communists, when, when Hitler won, when Hitler beat the Communist Party, they, they all crossed over. They all joined up with, with the Brown Shirts. They did a, a report in the Brown Shirts. They had 600,000 members at one time, and they estimated that 55% of them were former communists or socialists. That was just like changing denominations from Baptist to uh, Lutheran. You know, it was just another variant of socialism or communism. So right now, Antifa is, is attacking what well, they say is attacking Nazis, but, you know, their definition of Nazi is anyone who voted for Donald Trump, anybody who's a Republican, or anybody who supports the U.S. Constitution. There are, there are minimal numbers of real Nazis in this country, a handful, but Antifa is really out to destroy America. Antifa hates America just like the Nazis hate America. They are birds of a feather. They're like two mafia gangs fighting for turf. But it doesn't, wake, it doesn't make one mafia gang any better than the other. Well, I think, uh, was it Lenin or Stalin called them useful idiots? We're talking with Trevor Lapp. Useful La- idiots. Yep. 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 We're I'm, talking I'm with meat Trevor. in the sandwich. Absolutely. Trevor, we uh, just got to take a break real quick. We'll be back with more with the uh, author and filmmaker Trevor Loudon right after this on Cowboy Logic Radio. Cowboys didn't dance, didn't wear designer shirts. Hi, thank you for listening. My name is Ron Phillips, and I'm the owner and operations manager of Talk America Radio. It is with great pride that I offer you these two 24-7 streams of some of the finest talk radio programming in the country. But I need your support. Talk America Radio is a listener-supported network. That means we need your help to continue to offer the quality programming you're hearing right now. Please visit TalkAmericaRadio.us and click the Support Us button. You can contribute monthly or send us a one-time amount. We'll put it to good use continuing to share the American voice. Thank you. Antifa is at war with your government. Antifa is an organization that claims to fight fascism, but is actually, you know, the most fascist organization probably in the United States. Their only argument they really have is, we want to be the thugs in control and not you. They believe that right-wingers need to be stopped by any means necessary. The dangerous stuff is the media asking whether it's okay to punch a Nazi at the same time as branding everyone Nazis. If you are waving a Nazi flag, one, you're a moron, two, you're a terrible person. The ideology of communism was not defeated. There are plenty of stories of the homes of fascists being raided and all of their things being smashed. They're not freedom fighters pushing for less government. They're brainwashed communists trying to kill people. And at one point, you're going to snap.
This is Denise Simon, host of the Denise Simon Experience. When I'm not debating with Donna Fiducio about politics, I listen to Cowboy Logic Radio. Why, you ask? Because outside of my blog, founderscode.com, and my own radio show, the Denise Simon Experience, Cowboy Logic is by far the most entertaining and informative radio show on planet Earth. Plus, Don makes me feel guilty if I don't listen to his radio show every week. <laughs> Hi, this is Captain Matt Bruce from the Captain's America Third Watch, and you're listening to Talk America Radio, the new dominant force in conservative talk radio. Hi, it's Mark Walters from Armed American Radio. You know, for nearly a decade, I've been educating, informing, and entertaining responsibly armed Americans. And during that time together, we've shared some ups and downs, haven't we? Trump's election saved our Supreme Court, and no doubt the future of our gun rights for now. But now is not the time to lay down. The enemies of freedom are well-funded and more determined than ever. To keep up with the state of your gun rights, make sure to tune in to Armed American Radio right here on Talk America Radio, the new dominant voice in conservative talk radio. Hi there, this is Suzanne Shattuck, and you're listening to Talk America Radio. Hi, I'm Ward Cleaver. And I'm June Cleaver. From Leave It to Beaver, and you're listening to Talk America Radio. Ward, aren't you a little tough on the beaver? No, we can't say that. (laughs) Do it again. (laughs) She said it on the show. She said it on the show. That's where it came from. That's 30 years ago. All right, let's try it again. Hi, I'm Ward Cleaver. (laughs) (laughs) And I'm June Cleaver. Try it again. (laughs) Don't laugh. (laughs) Okay, game face. (sighs) Okay. Hi. I'm Ward Cleaver. And I'm June Cleaver. From the hit show, Leave it to Beaver. And you're listening to Talk America Radio. Ward, don't you think you're being a little hard on the beaver? Hi, this is Dr. Kelly Ward, running for the United States Senate from the great state of Arizona. And this is Cowboy Logic Radio. Hey, everybody, they're back on again. Cowboys didn't dance, didn't wear designer shirts. Exchange a piercing way, yes. Back when the West was really wild. Welcome back to Cowboy Good evening, Logic ladies Radio. and gentlemen. My name's Don Newen, and let me be the first to welcome you back to the fourth and riveting, riveting. segment of <laughs> Cowboy Logic Radio. We have got one of our favorite people, our dear friends, Trevor Loudon, with us. Uh, those of you that have missed the last segment need to go find the archive so you can get caught up to speed. But what we're going to do, uh, Donna, let's get into a little bit with Trevor on, uh, first of all, a recap of his most recent film, America Under Siege, and Tifa. But Trevor, would you mind giving the listeners a little bit of history about Antifa, where it's getting its funding, kind of a recap of the film, uh, but trace back the roots of Antifa to where it's become this uh, misguided misfits uh, that are, quite frankly, dangerous. Yeah, well, and people can see the movie just by Googling America Under Siege Antifa. You can see it online for free. It's uh, going gangbusters right now. But Antifa came out of, was really invented by Leon Trotsky, the, one of the fathers of the Soviet Revolution. And he came up with the ideas of getting ga- gangs of thugs not directly connected to the Communist Party, but under the control, not, not openly connected to the Communist Party, but under the control of the Communist Party, to set them out on the street, to beat up opponents, smash stuff, and basically wreck and intimidate any opposition to the communists. So it was used in Italy um, in, in opposition to Mussolini in the 20s, and it was really big in Germany in the early 30s when the, when the German Communist Party was, was vying for control of Germany with the Nazis. And as I said before, when the Nazis won that battle, many of the anti and communists crossed over and joined the Nazis because they're really birds of a feather. Then it sort of died, it, it, it 
popped up again in post-war Germany, again controlled by the German Communist Party. And then in the 80s and the 90s, Antifa resurfaced again, again in Germany, again controlled by the communists and the anarchists, largely to battle the sort of um, patriotic parties in Germany and also the gangs of Nazi skinheads coming out of formerly communist East Germany. You also saw it in Britain, where they were battling the National Front and the British National Party. And then we saw it, basically, this was the black bloc that we saw in the, uh, in, the 19, in the early 2000s in America, the people who rampaged through the streets of San Francisco, smashing up the financial district. We saw it in the Occupy Wall Street movement, where you had black masked young thugs smashing things and assaulting people there. And then we saw it, then it's really come back with a vengeance in, um, uh, since be- just before and since the election of President Trump, where we've seen ga- gangs of black masked people causing big riots in Berkeley and Portland, Oregon and Charlottesville, Virginia, Boston, Massachusetts, etc. And what we're saying is just like Antifa was controlled by the German Communist Party in Europe, here it is controlled by the American Communist Party the American communist-controlled unions, and the Democratic Party. It's basically a gang of thugs being used by the sort of mainstream left to intimidate their opposition. You know, the Democrats don't dare do this openly. They have to have these gangs of thugs do it for them. So this is very dangerous. It's controlled from high up the food chain. It's financed by unions, by George Soros, by, by Marxist groups, by the Revolutionary Communist Party, which gets money from George Soros. And so this is a, a thug army in the service of the left designed to shut down free speech of any opposition to the Marxist and socialist agenda. So it's a very dangerous phenomenon. Why isn't, uh, I believe, um, Yugoslavia, Ukraine is going after George Soros. Why isn't that happening here? Well, because George Soros is so entrenched and he's paid so many people off and he's so, he's so wealthy. Um, you know, there was a famous story um, back in the 80s when it was found out that Ted Kennedy, the senator from Massachusetts, the brother of JFK, was going to Moscow working with the Soviets to try and undermine Ronald Reagan's foreign policy. He was basically committing treason, but nothing was done. Now, when um, my friend um, Paul Kengor actually found the documentation proving this in Moscow, he released it. Nobody did anything. Nobody took any notice. He talked to a CIA officer. He said, did you guys know what what, uh, Kennedy was doing in Moscow in the 80s? He said, of course we knew. We knew exactly what he was doing. They said, well, why did you do nothing? He said, well, we couldn't touch him. He was a Kennedy. You know, certain people, if they're wealthy enough, uh, connected enough, can get away with treason, murder, you name it. Well, Hillary Clinton was a perfect example of that. Well, that was my you know, next and, question. And they're, un- they're, they're, <laughs> they're, they're untouchable. They, there's a certain level you get to that you're rich enough and powerful enough and connected enough, you, you are de- the laws do not apply to you. And, you know... Um, you know, George Soros should be in jail. He should be in jail many times over for committing all sorts of uh, financial crimes and all sorts of subversive activities. But, you know, he has friends. He admits he to being a Nazi war Party. criminal. I mean, really, as a kid, he turned over his fellow Jews to, to be, uh, you know, taken into concentration camps. And he said it, he felt empowered by it. I mean, it's an, Yeah, it's he just said unreal. he has no conscience about it whatsoever. The no. guy is a psychopath. Yeah. Well, what about no, Hillary a Clinton? At the very least. I mean, let's look at the city. Has, well, does she have anything to do with what's going on with this? I mean, she refuses. She's so narcissistic. It's obviously everybody else's fault. She lost. Huh. But uh, is she? I, I doubt she's putting any money into it because she's such a tightwad. But it wouldn't surprise me if something's been put into uh, this Antifa movement by yeah. her. Yeah. Well, I think she'd still like to be a player. You know, I think she'd still like to be a player. But. I, but she's not a very popular figure on the left right now. You know, mm-hmm. nobody likes her on the left, which is, you know, which which is, uh, you know, nobody used to like her on the right, but now they don't like her on the left either. So 
I think she's a marginal figure. Maybe she'll come back. I, I don't know. But really, it's the Bernie Sanders and the Barack Obama faction of the Democratic Party is dominant now. And they are the ones who are definitely feeding into Antifa and definitely helping Antifa, certainly with personnel and no doubt with money. Um, George Soros is certainly funneling, funneling money into groups like Refuse Fascism, which is main, one of the main Antifa umbrella groups in the country. So, yeah, I don't know about Hillary, but all the other major factions of the Democrats are certainly involved in this. Hillary's too much of a tightwad to probably give any of her money. <laughs> That's just my opinion. <laughs> well, All right, so, yeah, so yeah, Trevor, she, yeah. she didn't do anything when she was running with the Clinton Foundation. It was basically a, a, a Clinton family slush fund. All right, Trevor Loudon, you are the author of America, and the, the movie maker, America Under Siege. There are three America Under Siege videos we highly recommend you guys see. America Under Siege, Civil War 2017. America Under Siege, Soviet Islam, and the latest, America Under Siege, Antifa, which if you watch One America News Network, you did catch over the weekend as they were uh, playing it. And again, you can go to his blog, Trevor Loudon, L-O-U-D-O-N dot com. And the big one, enemieswithinmovie.com. Please go see that one, folks. That basically shows you every single person in the Democrat Party has connections to the communists and the fascists in our government, which is scary. And that brings me to my next question, Trevor. It surprised me after this last election, and I thought I had my pulse on what's going on, but I would have thought the Democrat Party, instead of doubling down and going farther to the left, would have said, okay, look, We've lost all these elections for the last eight years, with the exception of Barack Obama. We've lost tons of House and Senate seats. We've lost tons of local seats and governorships. Maybe we ought to wise up and come back to the center a little bit. And if anything, it's quite the opposite. Like you say, it's Bernie Sanders that admitted socialist, and I believe communist, and Barack Obama still running things. Yeah, and that's a very interesting question because, you you know, you think logically that's what they would do. But this is what they are doing. Now, do you remember the old um, Jesse Jackson Rainbow Coalition of the 1980s? He he ran twice in 84 and 88, this Mm -hmm. big Rainbow Coalition. He got 7 million votes the second time. And his idea was unite the progressive whites, the blacks, Latinos, Native Americans, gays, Muslim Americans, all the colors of the rainbow, black, brown, you know, white lavender, red, or whatever. And, and the idea was to unite those groups to form a, a, a majority. Well, there wasn't enough minorities relevant to the conservative population and then to do it. But now they figure there are. There's a guy out of San Francisco called Stephen Phillips. He married into the Sandler family, very wealthy liberal donors. He's on the board of the Center for American Progress. He wrote a book called Brown is the New White, which was endorsed by Obama and Nancy Pelosi. He was one of the first people to put funding behind Obama, by the way. He was a member of the League of Revolutionary Struggle, a Maoist group in the 80s, and a very active supporter and active member for over a year. He worked full-time for a year for Jesse Jackson's Rainbow Coalition. Well, right now, he's got a group called Power Pack, and they are developing candidates of colour all over the country. They are behind Cory Booker, the senator from New Jersey. They are behind Kamala Harris, the new senator from um, California. California. Yep. Uh, and they are backing, they're backing Stacey Abrams to become the governor of, um, of Georgia. They are behind Tulsi Gabbard of Hawaii, Maisie Hirono. What their plan is this. They are going to rebuild the Rainbow Coalition for 2020. And the logic is very simple. According to Stephen Phillips, 25% of the, 26% of the electorate are progressives of color, are, are, are white progressives. They will vote Democrat if Adolf Hitler was on the ticket. They are pure, rock-solid Democrat voters. 25% of the electorate are progressives of color, black, Latino, Muslim American, Native Americans, uh, also the gay community comes into that. They are 26% of the electorate. 26 plus 25 is 51%. Uh That is the new progressive majority. They are going to run Cory Booker, 
and Kamala Harris or possibly Deval Patrick or Julian Castro um, on the presidential ticket next time and they're going to reinvigorate the black and Latino base. Right now, what they, what they say is that they say the Democratic Party has made a big mistake trying to um, reinvigorate, to trying to get the, the, the white swing voter. Big mistake. It is far more cost-effective to, to sign up hundreds of thousands and millions of black people who don't vote and Latinos who don't vote but will vote progressive. This is a total reorientation of the democratic strategy. They are going full-on progressive. They are signing up hundreds of thousands of black, Latino, Native American, Muslim American, Asian American voters right now especially in the South, they're targeting Georgia, Texas, North Carolina, and Florida, particularly, as well as Arizona, and they are going to work to do everything they can to stop Donald Trump getting anything done, and then they're going to run candidates of colour in 2020 on the presidential ticket, and they're going to harvest this this rainbow coalition, and they think that is what's going to win the election for them. And once they've won that, then they're going to legalise every illegal immigrant in the country, which is between, you know, 12 and 30 million people who will then vote 80% Democrat, and they will have their one-party state. That is their plan right now. Donald Trump's election surprised me only because of voter fraud already. San Diego County had, what, 138% of registered voters vote? I mean, hello, what do you think? But Trevor Loudon, uh, they can do their power pack thing all they want. I think the bottom line is Americanism. And Donald Trump does hit a nerve with that. And they can probably look at all these people they want, but I think a smaller precursor to what they're trying to do that's going to show they're wrong is the nfl i mean there's nobody that's there's nothing more you know except for maybe baseball what you'd look at as far as sports in this country for decades and all well, of a look, sudden the the ratings are down 15 percent year over year 30 percent the last two years hello what does that tell you americans are peeved well, look, it does, but I'd just like to come back to that Rainbow Coalition thing for a minute because you need to take this very seriously. Because, if, if look, if Donald Trump can stop the illegal immigration, he can shut down the border, if he can open up the energy fields, if he can get on top of the crime and the drugs in the inner cities, if he can do all the things he's promised to do, he will put the Democrats out of power for 50 years. But the Democrats are now doing everything they can everything they can in cahoots with several progressive Republicans to make sure Donald Trump comes into 2020 with nothing done. If he comes into 2020 with nothing done, that strategy will win. They will, the Rainbow Coalition strategy will win. So we have to make sure, do everything we can, that Donald Trump is pushed to fulfill his promises get on top of the illegal immigration, the Islamic refugee resettlement, declare the Muslim Brotherhood a terrorist organization, all these things he's promised to do, because if he does that, we have a new future for America. If he cannot do that, we have the Rainbow Coalition and communist control of this country. I'm real serious about this, Donna. Mm -hmm. That's what we're facing. That is the consequences. I can't wait for Trevor Loudon and Victoria, his beautiful wife, to come visit us at uh, at our farm, spend a weekend, and we sit around and talk about all the really fun, warm and fuzzy stuff that's taking place. Because that is yet to take <laughs> place, uh, Trevor. And then we never sleep. We yeah. can't sleep after you, that. You come over here, and you and Victoria go to sleep, and you sleep well because you're out in the country, the cool breeze blowing through the window. You tell me how great you sleep. You come over here. Donna and I are staring at the <laughs> ceiling the entire night until we get up the next morning having not had one ounce of sleep. Now, Trevor, if you don't mind, we got about five, six more minutes here. I know yeah, that, yeah. We, uh, that you and Donna touched briefly on the NFL, but I'd like to get your observation on what's going on with this, uh, this NFL protest. Um, 
because I believe, and correct me if you think I'm wrong, I believe this is stemming greatly from uh, Richard Trumka and the unions. I'd like to get your thoughts on uh, that. Look, 100% they are behind this. This is not some spontaneous, you know, protest. You know, most of these football players wouldn't think about politics from one year to another, you know. They, they are there to play the game, but they are being put pressured by the unions and peer pressure to do this. So why are they doing this? Because this is causing the NFL a lot of damage. This is turning people away. This must be costing them millions of dollars. So the reason they're doing it, if you look at the stages of a communist revolution, one of the last stages of a communist revolution is demoralization of the population. Destabilization and demoralization. You know, football is one of the few things where good patriotic Americans, Democrat or Republican, can sit down and watch real tough guys competing in the American way, you know? This is the American spirit. This is, you know, people get behind it. They love it. It's a, it's a chance to get away from the dreary socialism that they, that they often have to live with. So this is the one pure area of American capitalism, right? So if you want to demoralize a people, if you want to divide a people, wouldn't you want to screw up football? Wouldn't you want to make football just contentious and ugly and unpatriotic? You know, it, it, what is it, what's this doing to the American psyche? You know, it is very, very damaging. So this is psychological warfare here. These, are, these football players who are taking the knee are just being manipulated. They're useful idiots because the, the people who want to bring America down want to bring everything that's good and pure and right about America into disrepute. And this is just all part of the game. This is unbelievable to me. They're so stupid. They don't realize they play a kid's game. They make millions of dollars a year. They're going to lose that? I mean, even Colin Kaepernick... I don't think, I don't think the NFL will recover from this. Colin, I really don't. Colin Kaepernick actually said, after he didn't get signed this year in the offseason, I promise I'll stand for the anthem if I get signed. He's toxic. None of these owners want him. But as Rush Limbaugh said, these owners, and I agree, I thought this actually before Rush, but, you know, at least he's got the platform to say it. These owners are afraid of their players, of their employees. What organization lets the employee tell the owner what to do? Unions. You'd get your butt fired union, so damn union, fast. Union-run union yeah. companies. Now, in this case, you get your well, butt that's fired. Exactly. Well, see, the, 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 you know, they, they've, they've been cowardly here. The owners, they were scared of the unions. They were scared of a strike, a, a shutdown, and they were terrified of that. And so they should have been terrified of that. And, you know, especially, but by cow, cow towing to this, they have damaged their brand forever. Mm-hmm. You know, they would have been far better to sack the very first guy who took a knee and sacked the next one who took a knee and ended this right off. Maybe they would have faced lawsuits or whatever, but they, they would have kept their sport intact and kept their reputation intact by taking the cowardly route. Look at the damage they've done to themselves. Look at the, the damage they've done to their own investments. And that's a message to every business person in America. You, you bow down to these union thuggery. You bow down to the political correctness. It's going to cost you in the long run. Look at Target, you know, by having their transgender bathrooms, they lost 15% of their revenues in a year. Well, how many billion dollars is that, people? Well, I've yet to go into a Target since that incident took place. And he could have used either bathroom yeah, he wanted. Yeah, exactly. You know? And, and yet well, right. yeah, but no, no. usually when I go into a store like that, I don't need to go to the bathroom. Oh, okay. <laughs> but that's, no, but, but but that's it's a moot point. point. It's the point, isn't it, you know? How much damage has the NFL done to, done to its image? Well, do you think, over this issue? Trevor, do you think the NFL will recover from this, or is it, once it reaches its low plateau, that's pretty much where it's going to stay? Yeah, I think I think they've done themselves permanent damage that will be lasting for decades. I you agree, know, quite honestly. Yeah, yes, it will recover to some degree, but it'll never be what it was. Nope. No, 
I agree. Ladies and gentlemen, John, Donna, I know that you've written down uh, the various websites. I'm afraid if I try to do it by memory, I'll screw something up. Please, how do we find Trevor Loudon? How do the listeners find him? Go to trevorloudon.com. That's T R E V O R L O U D O N dot com. L O U D O N. Trevorloudon.com. His uh, big movie that he did a few years ago is Enemies Within Movie.com. Again, this movie tells you pretty much all the folks in the government that are associated with the Communist Party. And you can start with Maxine Waters. And uh, then his three shorter movies that what's good about it is they're an easy watch and very informative. They're the America Under Siege movies, and there's three of them. America Under Siege, Civil War 2017, Soviet Islam, and the latest America Under Siege, Antifa, which again was shown on One America News Network over this past weekend. And uh, I implore everybody to go find that and watch it. And on- watch it with your kids. Yeah. It's watch it with your kids. Pastors, eye-opening. pastors, those of you that are listening to this show, play this video Play these films for members of your congregation. Trevor, I know you and Donna and and Victoria and I met out in Birmingham, Alabama, where you played Enemies Within in a sanctuary. Yep. Pastors, yep. step up well, like to the plate it's, it's with been this. played in many churches around the country. Hey, if mosques can foment terrorism, we can foment information. Trevor Loudon, we thank you so much for joining us as usual. Love to your gorgeous wife and better half, Victoria. Yeah, much better half. <laughs> Trevor Loudon. Well, it's, it's been great. I got one thing to say, Trevor, before we go here, and what? that is... Who, who, who are you, by the way? <laughs> My name is Don Newen. But, Trevor, I need to oh, close... Oh, yes. oh that's, I remember you. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Hey, I need to close the show out here with something, and Donna, I'm going to take us out on this. Okay. Trevor Loudon, I think it needs to be public knowledge, and you need to acknowledge this. You, sir, you, my friend, have married up. All the way up. Way there you up. go. Ladies and gentlemen, thanks for joining us I'm this week. Up. We will see you next week on Cowboy Logic Radio. Go to talkamericaradio.us, and God bless America. Check us out on the web at cowboylogic.us.